Hey, everybody. Uh, Dan here. And uh, I want to uh, talk about uh, ARC here. Now, you can look at the market today. And we just get a continuation of this breakout, right? Uh, same thing with the S&P. Uh, not quite as convincing. However, um, this does really get uh, people's attention. It gets the bear's attention, that's for sure. And uh, they tend to come out of hibernation. Um, but the NASDAQ composite is, is really kind of a big deal. Same thing with the NASDAQ 100 here. So we want to be in, in growth stocks, when, or I'll put it this way, because everybody talks about, oh, is the value, is the value trade dead? Or, you know, is the growth trade, is that, you know, do we just get into to the growth market? The, I'll say it, somebody needs to. The value trade has always been dead, always. There might be a time when the market's imploding and people are wondering less about what stocks they have in their account and more about how many rounds of ammo they have in their gun safe, if you have such a thing. Otherwise, and if you don't, you're wondering if you can hang out with your neighbor who does. But anyway, during those adverse times, of course, people are going to go to the, quote, value stocks, which are those stocks which do make money, but their charts suck. That's the fact, Jack. But I will also say this. There's no such thing as a growth stock. There's no such thing as a growth company. What there are a lot of, and they do cycle through as time goes on, are there are a lot of companies that are in growth mode. And that's different than being a growth stock. You'll see, hey, how about this? It's just one that comes to mind. Qualcomm, growth name, right? Well, guess what? It sure was back here. Massive growth stock. But then, oh, let's see, over the next couple of years, it basically just about erased itself down 88%. Nothing against Qualcomm. The point is, what happens when a growth story in a stock suddenly starts imploding the other way? Answer you realize that maybe there's more to trading than just going into growth stocks or going into um, value uh, sectors, stuff like that. What you want to be doing is looking for those stocks that have good fundamentals at the time, not three years ago, not three years from now, unless the chart verifies it, unless the chart confirms it. But you want to have stocks in your account with charts that are good. They don't have to be awesome unless, of course, you already own them. But you want to have stocks that are moving up and that have good, solid fundamentals with expanding revenues and earnings. You know, you buy a stock on fundamentals and technicals. You sell a stock on technicals. Now, where a lot of these chuckleheads on TV, they're typically not very good looking, I noticed. But then I'm one of those, so I guess I'm painting with a broad brush. But these chuckleheads on TV are sitting there all day long. It was driving me bats because I happened to be in the kitchen doing some stuff. And I had, uh, well, let's just say one of the financial networks on. And they had the same four people on that have been on for 15 years. And they're talking about the same crap that they've always been talking about, which is deer is doing this. Oh, dear, how could people not be in this? It's a wonderful company. Or, well, you know, I own Nike, but, uh, you know, I've owned it for a long time and I'm not really happy about it, but I like the shoe company. I mean, this kind of crap. Guys, this is not going to make you money. It's not going to make you a dime. In fact, it's going to lose you money. So if you're looking at value, if you're looking at fundamentals, that's all well and good. By the way, you don't hear me talk too much about it on TV, and I'm generally a hell of a lot more right than I am wrong. Now, before you think I'm patting myself on the back, I'll clarify that. I tend to be right more than I'm wrong because the only stocks I talk about are the stocks that are moving higher. So unless by some magical event, I happen to be talking about a stock 
right when it hits its all time high and snap hook reverses, I'm always going to be right because it's not me. It's the actual stock. So you look at stocks that make you think this way. Look, this stock is, is just breaking out of a base. I get it. And I'll show you one of those in just a second. Uh, I get it. I see what's going on here. I like this probability right here, right now. Not like, well, you know, their book to bill is this, and they are picking up market share from Jeb's, uh, you know, feed and grain shop, and they do happen to sell chicken. Um, it's not that kind of stuff. You're looking at a chart that you recognize from winners of the past, other winners. You're looking at a chart that looks like Microsoft, uh, looks like even Google at this point, although they were really sucking the hind tailpipe for a long time. Uh, you're looking at a stock like Apple, not AAP. You're looking at, you know, a stock like NVIDIA, all of these types of things that you're looking at and you're saying, okay, I understand this. I get this. I like this stock right here. Why? Because the stock's going up. See, you don't have to have any magical powers of prediction or premonition. All you got to do is have some eyeballs and a head that's able to keep the eyes level so you see what everybody else is seeing, but few people are trading. So you want to focus on stocks that are in growth mode. The companies are in growth mode. They're high growth companies at that time. They're the Microsofts of today, where Microsoft was like back in the 80s and certainly the 90s. Everything went up in the 90s. You, you didn't even have to be smart. Just buy four letters and any four letters and you're good. Um, and, and you made money and you were a genius. Then came March of 2000 and everybody got revealed to be what they really were, which was just lucky. So anyway, the bottom line is, you want to be focused on companies that are in growth mode. So why am I looking at ARC? Well, I'll tell you why. Because this is, I would say, I would say they could change the ticker to H-O-P-E. Um, as you guys know, um, this is a Kathy Woods uh, thing, you know, the big, huge beneficiary of the gamma squeeze a couple of years ago. But um, all of these stocks in here, and I don't know if this is an up-to-date list, but all of these stocks in here are innovation. They're innovators, then, which by definition means they are in growth mode. Now, I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying that's what the index is for. I think a lot of the stocks that Kathy Woods owns are crap. Um, it's like she just started trading I don't know, five or six months ago, and she's got a bunch of money. Um, however, it's not really what I think so much as what the market thinks. And the the index here, if you want to call it that, it's an ETF, but I look at, just look at it as the hope index. Um, you see this has been drifting along the 200-day moving average for a while. 50-day is below it, which is not a good sign. You want to see the 50 above it. However, the 50 is starting to drift higher. So I would say by the way this is looking, um, by mid-June at the latest, the 50-day will be up above the 200-day, which will be a good thing. That's a good technical development. But you look at the volume here today, it's probably about 20% higher than average volume. Stock closed right at the intraday high of 40.87. Um, 4087 was the high, 4077. So it closed within 10 cents of its uh, intraday high. That means that there is buying like all the way into the close. This is what you want to see. It's exactly um, what you want to see. So uh, I put this on our active trade idea list, uh, which is a list of stocks that, that I follow all the way through uh, from uh, initial entry, stop level, raising your stop, um, raising your stop again, 
selling half, selling it all, stuff like that. So, and by the way, if that sounds good to you, then you need to be a stock market mentor member. Um, but that's for another day. So what I'm looking at here on this is we got a solid breakout really right out of the gates here. Uh, Friday's intraday high was 39.30. So really your time to buy this stock, and let's see, Thursday's was 39.23. Um, so your time to buy this stock was right here when the stock surpassed Friday's, um, when it surpassed Friday's intraday high. And then you're, you know, you're off to the races. You're not making a huge amount today, 4%. But I look at this and I see the turn. And then I also look at all of these stocks in here and they are all at least theoretically and maybe practically, uh, they're all in growth mode. Just I'll just flip through these real quick. Uh, see how they are coming out of these bases. Okay, so these are all showing you, they're showing you the same thing, you know, a little bit different pattern, but they're all up today with uh with the exception of one which I'll will show you in just about uh, 15 stocks. Okay, so you look at all of these stocks. That's a nice one shop. You look at all these stocks and these are all growth stocks, growth theme stocks. Stocks that the market looks at as having good growth potential right now. So they're not value stocks. Stay away from value. If you want to be a value stock owner, just buy some Berkshire and uh, look at how rich uh, Warren Buffett is. Okay. Now he, he's been around. I think, I think he knew Moses. I, I'm not sure I, either Moses or, or Moses' son, but he's been around for a long time. So he's had an opportunity to amass all this wealth and that's fine. Uh, my bet is, but I wouldn't bet much. I'm not really sure that he's outperformed the market. Um, but again, I'm not sure. And nothing against old, you know, Dairy Queen boy. I love him to death. Um, but with respect to ARC, I would rather own ARC right now than Berkshire because I think this is going to go higher. That's all I got for you, buddy. I will see you next time.